Wow, here we are again, folks. We're back in Colossians still. Uh, we're going to wind it up here in today. And um, life must be first be built downward and rooted in Christ. Next, we must be built it upward and built in Him to establish in the faith, 2 and 7. Uh, rearing a steadfast structure to his praise and of course holy by his grace. This is the higher life. The more you have inside, the more you can bring out of your mouth to the outside. And uh, I like to be close enough to God so that if I'm around somebody, uh, they feel the Holy Spirit. They know the Spirit of God has entered where they are. I like to be that close to the Lord. The higher you go with the Lord, the steadier is your dispensation and the less disturbing our temptations and the smoother is your everyday life. We see Paul's personal concern for the church at Colossae. He longs for the Christians to be established and kept firm in their convictions so that they showed uh, philosophers and legislators and people of other uh, things of their day would not deserve them. The best way to be protected from snares of the world and its philosophy is an understanding of the perfection of Christ. For he is all in all. Be rooted and grounded in the word lest you be swept away by false teachers. And that's what's happening today. There are those cults that prey on Baptist churches, especially. I'm in a Baptist church, and I know. They prey on Baptists. Why do they prey on Baptists? They said, because Baptists know a lot of Bible, but it's all confused. They, don't, they haven't put it in order. They haven't followed it. They're not following it like they ought to. And uh, they've learned a lot of scriptures, so they come over here, and we're going to put them in order with those scriptures they already know. And what happens is they're teaching the scriptures wrongly at the other end of them, and they're not saying what they're saying. And i got news for you. This kingdom right here on this earth is not going to be the godly kingdom. That thousand-year reign is going to be God's reign, but you're not going to be right here on this earth in this kingdom. Some of the popular street corner philosophers of the day were teaching that man is worthy of approaching Christ directly. He needed to approach him by means of angels, 2 and 18. Well, this was not true. And there are some today that teach the need to approach God through the Virgin Mary, and that's not true either. And there are some persons today in Christ and say that you meet through meditation and that's not true either uh, and he he adds that I am the way I am the truth and I am the life and this is father and no man comes to the father but by me and so you can't go by organization you can't go by giving everything up or you can't go by doing a lot of things physically you have to do them spiritually Christ is the only mediator between God and man Paul remains the Christian that he was and that he died on the cross that Jesus died on the cross and he freed us from the law and we need not keep the feast days then there is nothing Christian in uh punishing the body in fasting now there are some fastings yes but if you're doing it to punish your body which is what's being taught by some people I'm going to punish my body for 40 days and I'm not going to eat for 40 I'm going to punish my body that's not true that's not what Jesus did he didn't punish his body for the 40 days he fasted he fasted those 40 days for the power to go to the cross. Do you know what a job it was to go hang on the cross and give your body and not complain and say, God, I willingly give my flesh for you to kill and I willingly give it to you 
uh, the, 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 all the demons of the world for three hours can come on this body when I'm hanging on the cross. And they did. And he took all the sin of the world on him for three hours of darkness. And the world shook. As the uh, Aztecs had done through the centuries. And they still doing. And that's the sacrifice that, that God asks is a broken spirit. Not a beaten body. A sinful heart can dwell in a fasting body, self-imposed hardship, a no value offsetting the thoughts of a sinful heart. We like to think that when we have done something bad, that we can ease our record by doing something which we feel like is good. And that would offset the bad. That's not a fact. That's not the truth. But we must remember that only what's done in Christ will last. The Bible says there's only one day. It will soon be passed. And only what's done in Christ will last. And that's where it all lies, my friend. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Romans 3.12 If God has taken out of good nothing, oh, is left. If you take the good out of nothing, O is left. Wow. Uh, the inner life in Colossians chapter 3 is talking about the building up our inner life downward in us, rooted in Christ, but upward, built up in Him. But our building must also be inward. So we got to be inward and outward. Let us know that Christ in the believer's life, many believers that Christ gave us life as one would put in the living seed into a flower pot. The pot would hold a detached thing, life, but Christ is more than that. He himself is in the believer. Then life that is in Christ is in the believer. The illustration is, he gives is, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. And we are to remain in the vine. A grape uh, branch sticking out will not yield a cluster of grapes if it's not hooked into the vine. Neither will a man that says he's a Christian, if he's not hooked into the true vine, Jesus Christ, will he yield fruit. Uh, the Brown family lives in a house that was uh, in... Uh, uh, I saw in the neighborhood. Weeds grew over the porch in the shades and were torn and the curtains were sagging and solid, uh, soiled. And one day passing by the house, we saw the grass cut fresh white. The curtains were hung in the window properly. The broken steps were mended. And when did the Browns move, we asked. Why, they haven't moved, answered the neighbor. Oh, yeah, no, they haven't moved. Uh, they don't live in the house anymore. A new family have moved in. I haven't seen the people yet, but I know by the appearance that a new owner occupies the house. Yes, our outward life will be different. Others will see Christ living in us. Since we are rooted in Christ and our life is in him, we are not only identified with him in his death, but we are in his union with him, in his <laughs> resurrection. <coughs> in Christ's death, we did uh, to sin, and his resurrection, we rose to walk. We died to sin, excuse me, and we rose to walk in newness of life. Since we are risen with Christ, we should seek those things which are above and show the best of our ability in the goal. Like that old house that they were walking by. That's like our us before we're saved. And when we get saved, people go by and say, Man, that guy used to be an alcoholic. Man, he used to come home and fall out of the truck and stumble in the house every night. He's drunk and all that. And now he's clean and sober. And I'm coming to the same house, but the house is cleaned up. The yard's cleaned up. There's no more beer cans laying around. 
There's no more nothing. It's clean. It's nice. And the cigarette butts are gone and all of that stuff. And we are in the place where we're supposed to be, supposedly, when we give up all of those sinful things that make a house look like it, it looked. And so Christians are to look like Christ-like people. Christ is all or nothing. Yes, Christ is all. Chapter 3 and verse 11. If Christ is not all in your life, then he is nothing. There's no uh, test of any false teaching or today than this. Where does it put Jesus Christ? The Bible says every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and is God... He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, 1 John 4, 2. It, this is the test of every creed does it proclaim that we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins, 1 and 14. If so, it is true, it is not false, 1 John 4, 1, 2, 3. A Christian's heart is a single heart. Colossians 3.16 Christ wants us to be uh, taught in his word and then he wants us to express our joy by singing the hymns that we sing. The chapter 4 of Colossians introduces the, the newfound life. The inward and outward life of Christ in a man. We find that most uh, creative buildings were created by an architect. Jesus is the architect of the Christian life. If you will read his Bible, he will direct what your life is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like love, hope, charity, and those things that can't be. Now, if you want to read, do some Bible reading this week, and some weekly Bible reading. Look at Paul's greeting and prayer in Colossians 1, 1 through 14. Monday, look at his seven superiorities of Christ. Colossians 1, 15 through 29. Give us seven superiorities of Christ. Tuesday, Christ exalted. That's Philippians 1 and 16. Wednesday, Complete in Christ, that's Colossians 2, 1 through 19. Uh, Colossians, excuse me, 2, 1 through 19. And uh, uh, Thursday, uh, the old and new man, Colossians 2, 20 to 3, 11. That talks about you being redeemed, becoming a new man. And then Friday would be Christian living. That's Colossians 3, 12 through 25. And then on Saturday, Christians grace. Grace is. And, uh, and that's in Colossians 4, 1 through 18. The graces of God come upon a man who has given his life to Jesus and given his soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a graceful God. And he is a true God and he will come and meet you where you are if you'll give him the opportunity. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.